Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and look at this awesome game we're going to be playing here today, guys. Alien Storm. You play as a mom and pop proprietor of a alien hunting hot dog stand called Alien Busters. Oh God, Alien Burgers. Who would want to eat an alien burger? Um, you have a cool turtle van. You have Ghostbuster packs. You get to zap and beat up aliens. Uh, this game has been compared to Golden Axe. It's very similar. It's got a three button uh, mechanic. There's like attack, run, and use your super, which kind of wipes the screen. Um, but this is a game by Sega, obviously. It's the Sega logo is there. This game looks amazing. This game is like the 90s boiled down, like all the awesome parts of the 90s, you know, like aliens and monsters and like alien hunters and superheroes and everything. The colors look amazing. It's just, it just looks like a great game. I'm just so excited to play this. This game is my reward to myself for having made it through five years of the Thousand and One Quest, if you've been following along in uh, my main series there. But uh, I've been at this for five years. And uh, to reward myself, we got some alien storms. So without further ado, let's slam in some quarters here. Let's start with four quarters and give it a go. So you have uh, different characters here. I think this guy's name is Gordon or Garth, depending on what system you play it on. This is Karen or Carla. And of course, they have their trusty robot sidekick, Scooter. Um, the 80s were all about having a trusty robot sidekick. Oh, and I guess I'm selecting Scooter. I was going to select the dude first. But it uh, doesn't matter. We'll try all the characters over the course of this. Um, that was that. Oh, God. The graphics just look so cool. Uh, we have to watch the intro again, because what kind of heroes in video games are running an alien hamburger hot dog stand? Ugly. The alien busters. That is just so cool. The concept is just awesome. I don't know why this didn't get a TV show. Okay, so the robot. Oh, he just straight up has guns. What kind of hamburger preparing robot is this? Oh, and there's even an alien under that uh, under that bush. All right, well, we will take it. Robot actually seems a little overpowered here. Like these these aliens can't even compete. He just has like freaking machine guns and rocket launchers that come out of him. Okay, is this guy? Oh, I was going to say, should we save this guy? He's looking a little pink. He might be infested with an alien. Go ahead and whip this thing. Get some energy. So the energy I am imagining is like uh, the magic in Goldeneye. Or not Goldeneye. Uh, Golden Axe. Golden Axe. In Golden Axe, you beat guys up. You stole magic from like little thieves. And then you use that magic to like clear the screen uh, with like super attacks. So that's basically what we got going on here. We'll have to remember to use all the super attacks before the... Um, uh, before each character dies. So basically, whenever one character dies, we're going to switch to another. That is our rule here. Oh my god, in a first-person mode. Oh, this is so cool. We're just, like, blowing apart this, like, grocery store here. That is awesome. Ooh, we got some energy as well. 1P. Oh, this is so cool. This kind of mixes, like, XCOM and Duke Nukem 3D. Like, I'm getting vibes from, like, all these different games here. Okay, can we save this girl? Oh, we, I think we totally did. We got her. Don't worry, ma'am. You have been rescued by Scooter. Why did everyone in the 80s have a robot sidekick? I wonder. It was just like a thing. Like, people didn't even question it. It was just... I guess it all came from Star Wars. Like, R2-D2. Yeah, Star Wars was so successful. Movie companies were like, we just gotta copy that. So everyone had, like, a cyborg or robot uh, companion. That guy's getting eaten by an alien. Should we save him? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, that was just the intro to level two. Get out of here, civilians! This guy's not a civilian. He's an alien in disguise! Oh, these guys are also aliens. Ah! So why are these aliens invading us? I would like to know. Oh, he's eating me! Do not eat Scooter. Please refrain from eating the robot. That that guy had a, an alien on his back. We did not help him, though. He just ran off the screen. Eat it, alien scumbags. Would anyone else like a taste of hot justice? Oh, God, an alien's got me. All right, we're going super. Oh, I just blew up. <laughs> I like how that's his super move is to self-destruct and then go and pick up his own head. Interesting. So that's the energy, I guess. I'm guessing if we max out the energy, he does like a huge attack. Oh, God. All right, super time again. I was worried the game would be too easy and we just play the whole game as one character, but I'm already almost dead as the robot and we're only on level two, so. That's actually a good thing for us. We want to make sure that, uh, that we die. Oh God, 
Oh god, I need the screen clearing thing now. They're turning into spiders a la the thing. They just ran away, too. It wasn't very noble of them. Oh, that one ran away, too. Oh, we're chasing them at high speed on foot. Oh, it's turned into a shooter. This game is really cool because it's a beat-em-up, but it has, like, all these different shooter levels. This is actually wild. This is awesome. Um, this game, by the way, was not just an arcade game. You could have played this on the Sega Master System or the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. So uh, maybe you remember this game from uh, one of those systems. Uh, I Let me tell you, I would have loved to have this on the Sega Genesis as a kid. Um, we'll start. Oh, no, it just it, it automatically starts us as the same character. I want to switch characters. Hold on, we'll see if we'll see if we can make it happen. Oh, it's a little alien baby kid. We'll see if we can switch characters soon. I'm sure I'll die again soon. But I used to love playing Golden Axe uh, with my dad when I was a kid. Two player, two player co-op beat em ups on home consoles were the shit back in the day, guys. They were awesome. Um, so this, if I'd known this existed, I totally would have told my dad to get this. Never came out on Super Nintendo or anything like that because it was a Sega game, which is too bad, but also understandable. I mean, you know, Sega's not going to release games for their competitors. Oh, that alien just came and like swiped my face. This, this part is actually really cool, too. I love how just the raw amount of bullets your guys firing into this electronic store. It's just like gunning down everything. Boom, 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 boom. This is this is great. And we got the parallax scrolling with the different layers of the background. So it feels like there's depth and distance here. Man, Sega went all out for this. Why did I never know this game existed? Um, in the Sega Master System version, this is a one-player game, but in the Sega Genesis, you got two. In the arcades, you can go all the way up to three players. That guy is spitting aliens. That's hardcore. Just spit out your henchmen. <laughs> Imagine the conversation before the battle where you're like, All right, henchmen, loyal henchmen, I need to eat a bunch of you, but don't worry, I'll be spitting you back out in sequence. Or I guess I mean more realistically, he probably is just like some kind of like queen alien that's literally spawning the fighters out of his gut, out of his gullet. Um, but yeah, definitely getting XCOM vibes from this game. This game did come out also on other systems. Bonus Energy Award. Um, oh, look at all that energy. That's sweet. Mission 3. Scooter has his head on a platter. <laughs> oh, we even have like a... There was a news reporter person. We have hovercrafts. What are these things? Whip them all down. What is that guy has giant hands? Um, this game came out on Amiga, came out on Atari ST. Actually, here's a fun fact about this game. Um, I didn't know this, but apparently Sega and Atari had a huge, not huge, but they had a legal battle um, in the 90s or whatever, when this, or late 80s, when this game was sort of uh, in production slash coming out. This game came out, I think, in 1990. But anyway, Atari uh, filed some suits against Sega for patent infringement, and they they tried to block the release of the Sega Genesis and the Sega Game Gear. They tried to get an injunction to stop the sales of those systems, too. I, I never heard of that in my whole life. I didn't realize Atari and Sega ever had, like, a lawsuit. Like, I know, like, Nintendo's had lawsuits against all sorts of uh, companies and stuff over the years, and... I know there have been, like, other lawsuits and stuff over the years from other companies, but I didn't know that Atari and Sega went at it. Yeah, apparently there was a lawsuit um, about the patents, some patent Atari had, and they said being violated in the Sega Genesis and the Game Gear. Um, I always wondered if it... Not always, since I just found out about it, but I kind of wonder if it had any, anything to do with the controller ports. Because I know the Sega Genesis uses the same controller port as... Can we select characters? Damn it, we can't. Okay, well, you know what? We've seen we've seen the robot play for a bit. Those those early levels look totally awesome to me. I'm fine going back and replaying them a little bit because I just I don't want to play the same character. So we're gonna switch to um, let's try Karen. Give her a shot. Hey, there's a golden axe dwarf there. They give you scores at the end. There's like the Johnny Five. I'm alive robot. It's actually really cool. Oh my god. I would have loved this game as a kid. All right, Karen, you're getting your shot. Let's Make go. it a good one. Let's go. Um, Karen and Garth obviously are pretty cool because they have the Ghostbusters backpack. So that's kind of what I wanted to see. Whoa! He got me! Help me! 
we gotta watch this intro again every time guys i'm not i'm, ne I'm never skipping the cutscenes in this game so get used to it um but anyway uh, yeah i was talking about the patent lawsuit so the, the lawsuit ended up getting settled between um so <laughs> sorry karen has like a like an obvious butt pose she's like showing off her uh, zumba class uh you know um gains <laughs> She's like, check out my buttocks. It is firm. <laughs> and I also fight aliens. Um, anyway, I'm getting distracted here. She also has a flamethrower. I thought she... So I guess it's only the dude. It's only Garth who has the Ghostbuster backpack. We will see Garth before this video is out. Trust me. We gotta, we gotta give Karen her shot, though. Uh, maybe I should... Here, okay, here's my rule. We're gonna use three continues on Karen. Oh my god, she just got eaten. Three continues... And if if after three continues I die, then we're gonna switch to the dude, and then we're just gonna credit feed our way to the end, and that'll be our way of seeing like every character. Um, but I keep okay, I keep getting distracted. This lawsuit. Long story short, Atari, Sega settled, and one of the uh, the parts of the settlement was that they agreed to um, they agreed to cross license some games, and this was one of the games they cross licensed. So Atari was gonna be able to port this game to one of their systems. Not the Atari 2600. Uh, man, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine this game on the Atari 2600? I mean, if you go look up the Sega Master System uh, version of this game, it does... I mean, it still looks fun and good, but it does actually look pretty rough uh, compared to the arcade game here. Like, the arcade game looks beautiful. This looks, this looks magnificent. If you were to remake this game today, you know, for like a, a Kickstarter campaign. I wouldn't change anything about these graphics. But if you redid the Sega Master System version, I probably would. But, uh, but yeah, imagine this on the Atari 2600. That'd be brutal. It was actually the Atari Jaguar that this game was supposed to be ported to. But for obvious reasons, that never happened. Because, you know, the Atari Jaguar was a giant flop. And very few games uh, ever saw the light of day on that system. But, uh... You know what, actually, you know, like, I'm making fun of the idea of... Uh, hey, it says Altered Beast there. That's so cool. This game exists in the Segaverse. So in the Segaverse, the dwarf... So in the Segaverse, Golden Axe happened because the dwarf exists as a dude. And also, Altered Beast is a game that people play in the Segaverse. I don't know. Pretty cool to think of, like, uh, an MCU-style connected universe of all the Sega characters. Oh, back off! Oh, wait, we've never used a roll. There we go. I didn't use it with the robot. We can try using it with Karen here. She does a lot of aerobics, so she's good for the rolling. Hoo, hoo, oh, God. Oh, there's also, like, uh, voice samples in this. I didn't really notice with the robot. I don't know if he said anything. But she, when she gets hurt and stuff, she says stuff. Disgusting. Okay, the aliens are... almost killing me, so I gotta use my energy to make sure I don't waste it. The next screen that gets full, we're totally using this. One thing that actually is a little hard in this game is I, it, because you're using like short range guns, I kind of have trouble knowing how to like line my shots up. No! Oh, she just called in a nuke. All right, so that's her first continue. Um, what did I say? Three. So we'll get to see a fair a fair amount of the game with Karen. Let's call in another nuke. <laughs> oh man. Um, I forgot what I was talking. I totally forgot what I was talking about. Um, uh, but what I what I was gonna say is that did you guys know that Double Dragon is on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? Like speaking of beat 'em ups on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, um, this game I don't think you could ever do justice on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. But apparently they tried and I mean they succeeded, succeeded in the sense of the Double Dragon exists on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I don't know if it's a good game or not. That's that level of success I can't speak to. I, I love this. Look, look how fast she's running. Karen, Karen probably rocks her Zumba classes. Look at this. She's insane. What did people do in the 80s? It wasn't Zumba. It was like, what did, what did people do? Step aerobics or something like that? Whatever, whatever class people did in the 80s. Uh, that's what she's doing. Keeping her buns tight and firm, even though she's in a very busy marriage running an alien themed burger slash hot dog cart. And also, actually, literally hunting aliens. This is how they get their meat for the cart. <laughs> like, wow, this this burger tastes really good. They're like, yes, hamburger. It's not made of captured alien flesh. 
What happens if you use your super on this? Let's see. I want to try and use my suit. I need a bit more energy, though. Okay, here we go. What is she saying? Eat blast feelings? Something like that? I can't I can't detect. I, I can't hear what she's saying. I cannot detect her speech. Eat lead, alien scum. Eat lead, alien scum. Okay. Super move! Okay, I, I, I guess she can't use her super move on this. Oh, I love the, like, little green balls that, like, fly at you, like, trying to eat you. It kind of reminds me of, like, the kind of toys you would get as a kid in, like, the 80s and 90s. Everything was sort of, like, goblin-themed. Like, remember, I think it was, like, Boglins or something, where, like, gross little puppets that boys could wear. They were, like, rubbery ghoul puppets. I, I definitely had one, a Boglin. I loved it. Like, just gross alien... I, I don't know. Like, Ninja Turtles is another good example of this. You know, it was sort of, like, gross mutant thing. Mutants were big in the 90s. Mutants were big in the 90s. Maybe that's it. Just sort of like mutiny things. I can't put my finger on, but but doesn't for anyone who did grow up in the '90s, doesn't this feel so '90s? Mission three. Scooter, bring me a head that looks like yours. I'd like to eat it. Why is he? That that's such a cool car. Why is Scooter serving me a head? Oh, she has she has literally a gun. She's a flamethrower. She's like bomb. She also just has like straight up like a desert eagle. Or like blowing away aliens to get in her way. Get out of here. Oh, but they, they coughed on her. Didn't like that. Oh, get out of here. Disgusting. Disgusting. I have a feeling, so I have one more credit with her. Let me go ahead and insert it now. I have a feeling that we're going to die around the same spot as Scooter got to. So these, these first two matches have just been showcase matches for Garth. Big reveal. Garth or Gordon, I guess, is his name, depending on the version. Don't know what uh, version I'm playing here. I mean, I'm playing the arcade version, but I don't know what the guy's name is. I mean, help, help, help us. Also, um, nobody else is helping with this alien invasion. I don't see any cops, military. They're all just phoning it in. They're like, the people who run the hamburger stand have got this. <laughs> we can go home. Don't worry, guys. The hamburger stand people got this. You know, unlike... Uh, Every time you like you see a, a hamburger stand, people are like selling food. Just remember that those people are the thin line between us and an alien invasion. <laughs> the person selling you your hamburger out of a truck could one day save your life, guys. That's how the world works, right? Ooh, now we're in like a parking garage. Let's destroy this car for no reason. Oh, here we go. It's on. It's on. There's like a dragon alien back there. Okay, here we go. Our last continue. Can we do it? As long as I pass the parking garage. Got this. On um, the arcade version here only has six levels, I think. So we're on like level three. So, I mean, I mean, twice we've made it here. So we've pretty much almost, I'm mean, halfway through the game. Um, but I think the Sega Genesis version had a few extra levels. And actually, I was debating what version of this game to play, honestly, before I decided on the arcade version today. But I mean, you know what the you know what the tipping point was? I just looked at the arcade version. I was like, you know what? It's just too good looking. It just looks too good. I have to play the arcade version. Um, originally, I thought this was a Sega Master System exclusive game, so I was gearing up to play this on the Sega Master System. But when I found out it was on the Genesis and there was an arcade version too, I was sort of like, oh, well, I got to play one of those. Um, the Sega Genesis version actually looks pretty good. In the same way that the Golden Axe... Oh, look at this jump she did! Holy shit, Karen! Damn, girl! She uh, should start her own workout routine after this. She has not been uh, eating those hamburgers. She might work at a hamburger truck, but she eats nothing but protein and uh, carbs, I guess. Which she instantly works out through insane workout regimes. Boom! Eat an alien scum! Oh, she's like whipping them with her gun. She doesn't even need to, like, flamethrow them. Oh, there's... She has an Uzi? God damn, girl. All right, well, Karen died. So Karen and Scooter both entered the alien wilderness, and they were crushed and crumbled and eaten by the aliens. Those aliens are made up of baby faces and tentacles. Oh, God. Um, it's going to be up to Garth to destroy the alien invasion. Makes me think of, like, Wayne's World. As if...
All right, what score did she get? Nine, 8.5. That one dude is a harsh critic. I oh, she got a 10 from the lady. So 7.76. I kind of like how they rate you. It doesn't seem to matter at all. Like there's no high scoreboard or anything like that. But anyway, all right, we're going to slam in some quarters here. I'm going to put in eight quarters, two bucks. Can we beat the game on two bucks? Let us see. This guy uh, <laughs> looks like Elvis. Actually, no, he kind of looks like Bruce Campbell. Hail to the king, baby. I'm beginning to think that the creators of Duke Nukem 3D just copied, straight up copied this game. Um, it also, this game also reminds me a bit of Contra. It's sillier than Contra. It's sort of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meets Ghostbusters meets Contra, maybe? Like that's kind of, oh yeah, here we go, finally. Oh, and he has a bazooka too. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't help. Huh. Well, that doesn't help. I want to try like a running attack. Okay, so the running attack doesn't work against piles of goo. Let's just kill these goo balls. Get out of here. I'll roast ya with my uh, Ghostbuster proton pack. This one's on loan from the Ghostbusters. Egon's a close personal friend. Also, he put a bazooka on because, you know, reasons. Because I'm fighting aliens, not ghosts. Um, but yeah, definitely. Oh, I just like straight up clubbing him with my gun. <laughs> I like the way that Garth works here. Garth, this is definitely not your Wayne's World Garth. This is more like your Bruce Campbell uh, Garth. Oh my God, could you imagine this this game having a movie in like the early 90s starring Bruce Campbell as the main character guy? And it's like a, a mix up of Ninja Turtles, of Ghostbusters, of like Evil Dead. Oh my God, why did that not happen? Somebody invent technology from sliders. Remember that old show Sliders? We could travel to parallel dimensions. Someone developed the slider technology and then let's all start sliding to parallel universes until we find the one where they, where Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi teamed up to make a, an Alien Busters movie. That is the world I want to live in, guys. I, you know what? I'm done with this one. I'm done with this world. I'm ready to jump to the next reality. Let's go do it. You guys remember Sliders? It was like, uh, sorry, Jerry O'Connell, which, uh, fun fact about Jerry O'Connell, uh, in, uh, high school, I guess, uh, my French teacher, the one who taught me French, uh, she was actually Jerry O'Connell's French tutor when he was on the old show My Secret Identity, which if you don't know any what any of this stuff means, it's okay. It was like a Canadian show. It was a pretty cool show, though. It was about a kid who... Uh, accidentally gets exposed to, like, toxic waste and develops superpowers like flight and super strength and super speed, but he has to keep it a secret, hence the name of the show, My Secret Identity. Um, it was, it was a great show. Um, but yeah, Jerry O'Connell was sort of like a child actor on that show, and he needed to be taught French. You know, child actors still have to get a GED. So the te teacher that I had in high school as a French teacher, she, uh, worked as a French tutor on that show and taught Jerry O'Connell, so there you go. So I, it's like two degrees of separation between me and Sliders. I should call up Jerry O'Connell and be like, yo, dude, get me some of that sweet slider technology. If, if you can, help out a Canadian bro, man. Okay, uh, Garth here is going to save his energy till it gets really high. Actually, you know what? No, we'll use it once to see what it is. And then we're going to try and like max our energy out and just see if that does anything. So, okay, this looks pretty good. What is your suit? Oh, God! <laughs> he straight up strafes the aliens with a helicopter airstrike. I like it. Oh, um, yeah. Sliders was a cool show. Sliders was a cool show. So the premise was uh, the, sci the scientists developed... It's, it's pretty much like Rick and Morty, almost, except it wasn't like sort of, you know, a, a comedy. I mean, Rick and Morty's an awesome show. Um, in fact, it's probably a much better show than Sliders ever was. But Sliders is a little more serious. It's kind of like Star Trek. Um, but the premise is a scientist character uh, develops a technology that allows him to hop between parallel universes. And then the technology malfunctions and he ends up hopping to a parallel universe but doesn't have the return coordinates to go home. And so the sliding device, the portal device... I think every like 24 hours automatically opens up a portal to another random universe and him and his companions who are all kind of stuck on this journey um slide to different universes every episode 
hoping to eventually find their way back home. Um, and I think even eventually they do technically find their way home, but they don't recognize it as home because it's like, um, oh, I remember what the, the crux was. The portal gun, every time they got to a new universe, there was a random amount of time before the next portal opened. And in the episode, I mean, this is totally spoilers for like a 30 year old TV show that was canceled. So I don't know if you want to hear it or not. But anyway, they they do find their way home, but they only have like five minutes before the next portal. And so they have to decide, is this actually home? And there's something in the newspaper, like the Cubs win the World Series. And they're like, well, that doesn't sound likely. They're like, but it could be our house, our home universe. And they're like, maybe. And then uh, and then they go to the Jerry O'Connell's house. And he's like, this front gate has... I don't know why I remember this, by the way. Ever, do you guys ever remember, like, random, weirdly specific things about shows you haven't seen in, like, 30 years? But anyway, he goes to the front gate of his house, and he's like, this gate has squeaked my entire life. If this gate squeaks, we are home. And he opens the gate, and it doesn't squeak, and they're like, all right, I guess we're in a parallel universe. So they, uh, they decide to jump, jump away. Right after they've jumped away, the mom comes out with a handyman. She's like, thank you so much for fixing this gate. It has squeaked his entire life. Maybe one day he'll return, you know? Like, And I think the implication is like, yeah, they found their way home. But uh, but they didn't recognize it. Uh, the, the show also features Gimli from Lord of the Rings. Uh, Rise Darby? Or Darby? I, I can't remember the guy's correct name, but he was in Indiana Jones as Sala. Uh, Indy's faithful uh, Muslim companion there from the Mideast. And so he's setting him up with uh, all the contacts and stuff he needs over there. Anyway, back to the game. We've killed 114 small aliens. I'm feeling good about life. The alien storm. We're in the eye of the alien storm, guys. We're going to crush these bastards. All right, we've seen this level like three times. Hopefully you guys aren't getting bored of, of this game. I mean, I can't... If you are, I don't understand you as a person because, like... Even if I played these only these three levels over and over, I would find them like utterly fascinating with how cool and crazy they look. But you know what? Different strokes. So maybe you guys are like, Jay, just get past level three. You could do me a solid and get past level three. You've got Garth. You've got your proton pack. You've belly ached this whole video about wanting to be a Ghostbuster. And now it's finally happening. So can you just not, <laughs> not let the game game over and get to the next level? I just want to see what the end of the game is like. If that's you, my friends, we we are in perfect agreement. I'm I'm gonna credit feed my way to victory here. That was a, actually other, another small consideration for playing this in the arcades rather than the Sega Genesis version, is that in the Genesis version, if I'm not good enough to actually beat the game, then we could just get to like level five and then have a hard game over. But in arcades, they always let you insert more quarters. So guess what? We're making it to the end. We're saving our uh, our helicopter strike for the final boss, apparently. Oh, yeah. We're just coming back. You can't kill me. You guys might be aliens, but I'm a ghost immortal vampire, dude. Bet you never thought you'd have to fight one of those. All right, into the parking garage. Let's mess this place up. <laughs> there's, like, no... There's not even any aliens. I just start, like, blatantly destroying all this, like, property. Crush it all! I hate cars! They're not eco-friendly, man! Which is true! Just crush all these cars, man! Oh, you're gonna spit green... Eating... Green mouth balls at me? I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't breathe your gas on me, either. It's actually hard to, like... Like, I'm, I'm actually trying here, but it's hard to go through the game without needing continues. I feel like a lot of arcade games were like that. Like, even if you were really good at an arcade game, it was actually really hard to not slowly lose health here and there uh, to the point where, you know, eventually you'd need to insert more quarters. <laughs> Wait, what did that guy say? Something, dude? You're dosed, dude. Anyway, now we're running at super high speeds. It is hilarious at the shooter levels. When they were designing this game, they're like, should we have the guys riding a motorcycle or something? And they were like, no, you know what? Just have them run on foot at about, you know, 67 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, man. You know what would be awesome is if this guy started to run so fast that, like, the little fire trail started behind his feet. And then he, like, burned his way through time. He's got a flux capacitor in his proton pack there. 
So like if by foot he manages to get up to 88 miles an hour, he goes through time. Actually, you know what? Okay, here's here's a just, you know, a random thought. Since we're talking about 80s and 90s stuff, you know, Back to the Future, one of the best 80s movies of all time. The DeLorean had a had a flux capacitor, right? Like is that all you need to go through time? So here's what I'm wondering. Like, could you have put a flux capacitor on a backpack and then gotten a motorcycle up to 88 miles per hour and then gone through time? Would that have worked? I mean, I guess you would need a supply of plutonium on your back as well, or garbage in the sequels since uh, they went to the Mr. Fusion drive or whatever. But like, supposing you had the 1.21 gigawatts needed to go through time somehow, you had like a lithium ion battery, like from our phones which clearly produces the same amount of energy as uh, plutonium. But, like, imagine you had a powerful enough battery and you just had a, a flux capacitor strapped to your back. Would that be sufficient, or had, did the DeLorean have, like, more stuff? You know, like, maybe the flux capacitor was sort of, like, the driving force, but the, the stainless steel shell acted like a satellite dish that amplified the time dilation or whatever and, like, actually created a portal or something. I don't know. And it's just thinking about it now i'm like could you actually have could you develop a time traveling suit that has a flux capacitor and power source built in and then you know you get on a motorcycle or a plane or anything you just start running really fast with like all your heart you get up to 88 and then boom you're going through time wait can we do a super no let's try to do a super in here but you can't so i guess no super moves in the first person shooter levels the variety in this game still actually surprises me. So we have beat em up levels. We have first person shooter levels. <laughs> oh God, what is this thing? Okay, you know what? Airstrike, baby! This is like some evil old man got turned into a, some kind of like gross. He got Cronenberged. <laughs> All the aliens are humans that got Cronenberged. What is this? What am I fighting? How do you fight this thing properly? Like, I'm just tanking the damage. Wonder if there's like a proper way. He's like just like tossing me all over the place like a rag doll. Get out of here, alien! Get out of here! Oh, he turned- Oh god, what is this? Oh, there's something- It's like a xenomorph meets a baby. He's trying to eat me. Like, just zap- Oh, a fist grew out of his stomach. Just like zapping him right in the nuts. <laughs> Get up close and, and shoot him in the groin. Even aliens gotta have sensitive spots, eh? I like throwing grenades, like, literally into his groin area. Gotta hurt. Hey, sorry, he killed me. Oh, but I'm back! I guess it takes some of the suspense out of these games to, uh... To just totally credit feed. I mean, fair enough, I would say. But, uh... I, I always feel like arcade games are just designed to be so much chaos that, like... I... I know what is what is this now? Oh god, what is this? What am I fighting? Okay, let's call in some more helicopter strikes. How many helicopter strikes will it take to defeat this thing? This thing is just eyeballs now. Bad breath, man. Bad breath, man. Bad breath, man. Also kind of feels like something out of Stranger Things, maybe? Definitely Cronenberg though. Oh god. Okay, now he's back to that form. Oh, he turned into a bunch of babies. Die, alien babies! I said I was going to save my en What? There's a bunch of energy there. Don't just leave it, you fool. Bonus energy award. Oh, we got full. We killed 13 big aliens. 13 of your big boys. Casa Italian Bakery. Alien UFO is attacking at the Casa Italian. Let's roll. Yeah! I'll save that guy. Oh, I can't. Too late. Oh, this... Look, it's a big alien with little aliens. He just was not interested in fighting me, I guess. <laughs> big alien with little aliens riding him. He was like, you know what? See ya. I, I don't have time for this stuff. I'm too old for this stuff. Get out of here. These are like little gremlin aliens. Back off. I guess this also does remind me a bit of gremlins. It's like literally all the monster stuff from the 80s and 90s, like condensed into one movie. Okay, we need some more quarters here. I think I threw in two more bucks. Let's try and keep track of our money. How much money would we have to ask mom for in order to beat this arcade game back in the day? I've gotten pretty far in two bucks. Now I'm at 225. 
Bad breath, man. Bad breath, man. What does that even mean? Oh, I love I love when he just clubs the alien. <laughs> Let me just clubs the alien. I don't know how to get him to do different moves. It's sort of like how the distance he is from the alien like determines what move he thinks is appropriate. Most of the time he just blasts it with his gun. But I, I like to think that sometimes he looks at that alien and he's like, you know what, I could fire a bazooka or I could just brutally beat him with my stainless steel uh, titanium alloy backpack instead. Courtesy of Egon Spengler. On loan from the Ghostbusters. Maybe not even on loan. Maybe he developed it for me. Maybe the Ghostbusters did some contract work. And they were like willing to develop. Oh, I have a gun too. Why do I not use that more often? Oh my God, he just started using it. Awesome. Uh, but maybe the Ghostbusters did some contract work. You know, like, maybe, maybe they were like, you know, like, id Software does this. They develop games, and they also sell their technology behind their games. Maybe the Ghostbusters were like, we catch ghosts, and we also uh, develop and sell proton packs commercially. We license our technology out to third-party developers who uh, build knockoff Ghostbuster proton packs with our tech. Roast all these guys. I feel like I'm doing okay on this level, actually. I think I'm, I'm getting the hang of it a bit more. I feel like I'm also dodging stuff a little bit more. Oh, what the? I hate it when the level ends. You don't get a chance to pick up those, uh, those extra energy tanks. Oh, there's like chickens and stuff bursting out of the crates. It's actually hilarious. Oh, I didn't even realize that was an alien up there. We're fighting a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know what you'd call them. Oh, for free, I, we gotta free all the chickens. These are like bug aliens. A bit of starship troopers mixed in here. I mean, we also have The Thing, George Carpenter's... Not George, John Carpenter's The Thing. As a classic horror movie, if you've never seen that one. Definitely, like, it's it's a horror movie for sure. But I think what makes it classic and awesome is that there's a lot to think about. And it has, like, an ambiguous ending and stuff. Those, those I think, are the best horror movies. Like, horror movies that just exist to have jump scares and stuff, but are kind of shallow. Those are the ones that I think don't stand the test of time for me personally. The horror movies I really enjoy are the ones that, like, are deep and sophisticated and that, like, yeah, I mean, they happen to have horror, but they're not... That's not the only thing they have to offer, you know? Um, but, you know, I mean, sometimes it is fun to have just a blatant horror movie, you know, like uh, like your Evil Deads or your uh, Army of Darkness, which is actually more of an action movie, I would say. Oh, there's the UFO. Oh, look at this. Oh, we can jump. Holy crap. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, cool. Oh, we're jumping really far now. Come here, alien spider thingy. The alien spiders are totally John Carpenter the thing references. Well, not references necessarily. Who knows if it was intentional, but they definitely are reminiscent of uh, the thing. The, uh, in that movie, some guy's head turns into a spider. Spoilers. <laughs> Don't you like how I say spoilers after I've spoiled it? Like, by the way, you just got the movie spoiled. No, actually, it doesn't reveal too much about the plot. Um, and again, if you've, if you've never, if you've never seen The Thing at this stage in history, you, I don't know what to say. Your, your time passed. Your spoiler-free time has passed. Now you're just gonna be riddled with spoilers. Actually, speaking of the thing, since since we're on the topic, um, if you guys are fans of the thing, look up a short story called The Things, plural. It's a science fiction short story that's won a bunch of awards, actually by, I think, a Canadian author, you know, so props to Canadians once again today. Uh, but it's about, it's basically a retelling of the thing movie, but it's from the perspective of the alien. And it is, it is, it is way more interesting than it sounds. Um, like if you've ever wondered what an alien consciousness would actually be like, the things does it. It's, it's, it's a great read. Um, it's not even that long, but I mean, honestly, look it up and read like the first page. You will be hooked. It's, it's so fascinating. So yeah, if you're interested, if you like the thing, check out the things. Um, I think you can even get an audio book of it for free because again, it's like a short story and the author, you know, like he doesn't own the copyright on the thing or anything like that. So it's, it's totally free, but yeah, you can uh, just go. It's like a 20 or 30 minute audio book. It's like actually it's decent length. 
Uh, not a long story, very fascinating. Uh, just to hear, like, what an alien consciousness behind something as weird as the thing, like a shape-shifting, you know, parasite would actually be like. Um, anyway. Back to killing aliens. Let's stop trying to understand aliens and go back to killing them. We've made it into the alien ship. This really does kind of, I mean, I was going to say it kind of follows the, the, the beats of Contra. But actually, I don't know if it really does, because in Contra, it's all about being like in the jungles of Nicar Nicaragua, killing like rebels and stuff, and then eventually getting into an alien ship. This, we've been in urban environments the whole time, which I think is also cool. I mean, I love I love the uh, Nicaragua, can't even say the word, Nicaraguan jungle uh, of Contra. But I have always been a sucker for games that take place in urban environments. I think that's why I loved XCOM so much when I played it. So XCOM, you uh, you literally uh, a lot of times have to go in and defend urban environments from alien invasions. And so it's you're in this like tactical, you know, top down isometric view commanding soldiers to kill aliens like in grocery stores and like people's apartments and parks and stuff it's, and it's just I, just I just love that idea i don't know what it is about it it's just so interesting just the graphics and the idea of it and stuff i don't know i just really love it i love urban environments what can i say i grew up in toronto one of the uh, big cities in north america well i just got eaten by an alien <laughs> he's taking me to space also it's like a like a woman's weird face you are here. <laughs> okay. All right. We're now, it's uh, sort of gone like Jonah and the whale. We're like now uh, in an alien. We've got a good uh, oxygen rich, breathable atmosphere in this alien. I love Star Trek. That's probably, I mean, ooh, we have a choice for this one. Um, I, I mean, I love Star Trek. Well, I mean, classic Trek, the new discovery and picard stuff don't get me started that stuff is like a travesty to like the memory of gene roddenberry but uh but star trek love it next generation might be one of my favorite shows of all time um but uh there were a few unrealistic elements about star trek first of all that every alien looked like a human i mean obviously it's unrealistic second of all that every alien spoke english although that can be forgiven because there is such a thing as a universal translator and so, um, you know, if we just imagine that really everyone is speaking different languages, I mean, even Jean-Luc Picard, the guy's French, right? He's not, he's not British. So, um, we can imagine he's actually speaking French to the crew, but the universal translator translates it as sort of, uh, you know, some fine British English. So I can, I can forgive the fact that everything speaks English, but, uh, the amusing part of the show is that every planet spaceship everywhere of interest they happen to go um happens to be an oxygen rich breathable atmosphere which is just ridiculous <laughs> it doesn't ruin the show for me i still love the show but it's just kind of funny to think about they never really have to crack open the spacesuits and worry about oxygen oh the last few levels are like in the alien okay now we're in her brain um also, also i insert oh these are like kangaroo aliens this is weird they're sort, they're sort of like goblins from Golden Axe. Yeah, they're like goblins from Golden Axe, almost. Or some other Sega game. I, uh, I can't put my finger on it. Um, oh, man, they're tough, though. Yeah, how about can we call in a... Oh, the, the helicopter! Oh! <laughs> okay, so the helicopter doesn't exist anymore, but we can still summon bullets from the sky. I like this guy's ability to rain bullets from within an alien. That is interesting. At least they went through the effort of taking the helicopter out because it didn't make any sense <laughs> inside an alien. Oh man, we're getting swarmed. All right, wipe them all out. I guess I, ca I, guess I guess I've been storing energy long enough that I can just go to town now. Um. Anyway, I did accidentally insert a quarter, so uh, what are we at now? So we we are at three fifty, I think. In terms of how much money this game has actually cost our parents. Not not too bad, actually. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, we got him. Changes into giant xenomorph baby 
It even has bull horns. I don't even know what this thing is. It's like every nightmare we've ever had. Uh oh, now I'm out of the super move. How many lives are gonna take to beat this guy down? Bad breath, man. Let me know what kind of what kind of insult is that? Oh yeah, there we go. I thought we were in like a safe spot. All right, then he turns into a bunch of eyeballs. The eyeballs don't even look threatening. They look like they're confused about where they are. They're just as surprised to be in a bunch of uh, these eyeballs are just as surprised to be in an alien as I am at seeing them. All right, we got him. He's dead. Turn into your bunch of baby heads. Okay, this time. I'm not going to kill them all till I've collected all the energy. Oh, one just flew away. All right, well, whatever. I wonder if these doorways make any difference. Oh, there's a bunch of these things. I mean, I guess you probably would fight different things. It's just chance whether you end up in a, a good room or not, though. Come back over here. Give me your baby heads. I need to spawn you for energy. My 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 backpack runs on ghost energy or mon alien energy. Oh, you know what this also reminds me of is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That was also a great game that just had a ton of like crazy monsters and aliens and just that that's the Super Nintendo equivalent to this. Dead breath, man. Although in some ways Zombies Ate My Neighbors is better than this game, and in other ways it's worse. Like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, definitely every level is the same in the sense of like you don't. Like, this level has shooter levels and first-person levels and stuff. You definitely don't get that in Zombies Ate My Neighbors. But Zombies Ate My Neighbors is a more complex game in its base gameplay than this. So it's not just a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's more like a maze game, and you have items and different kinds of enemies, and there's strategies you can use and stuff. So, um, in gameplay variety, this game comes out on top. In sophist oh the gun that's awesome. In gameplay sophistication, Zombies Ate My Neighbors comes out, and in terms of monsters and backstory, the games are equal. <laughs> Actually, no, this game wins. As cool as Zombies Ate My Neighbors is, and that you have that cool kid who has like the 3D glasses and stuff, Zach or whatever. As cool as that is, it doesn't beat uh, a hot dog truck running Ghostbusters alien hunting couple. Oh, and we're killing a brain. Perfect. Like, it just can't compare. It's a good game. Don't get me wrong. I've played it even on my channel. It's one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. So, I mean, I guess you gotta know this game's good when it's making me say that my favorite Super Nintendo game has some competition. In terms of style and stuff, though, again, I think I think in terms of sophistication, Zombies Ate My Neighbors definitely wins. Die brain. We're anti brain guys. We've seen what brains can do and we want no part of it. Okay, so we've officially now done four bucks in this game to get this far. I think I just slammed in another quarter, so I think we're at 425. We're at four or 425. I've kind of lost track. Oh god, the brain's exploding. Oh god, it still has an eyeball. I want aliens in my head to protect my brain from intruders. That'll teach you to eat me. You can't just eat all your problems, aliens. Oh, now I'm in like an oxygen. Oh, all three of us are. I didn't know you guys were here, too. <laughs> we're going to crash back to Earth. This is one of them day our Earth homing bubbles. Uh Oh, Hey, it's a ghost. It's an alien buster flying spaceship cab. Oh, we beat the whole game. We are one well-funded hamburger truck company. Our hamburger truck is like the most successful hamburger truck ever. It funds super high-tech scientific equipment for hunting aliens. It funds space travel. The R&D that I must have at uh, Mom and Pop's <laughs> Alien Burgers Incorporated must be off the charts. I like to see the reaction of our accountant. He's like, you know, hamburger sales are pretty good. But, uh, you're putting a lot of R&D into, uh, you know, proton technology. <laughs> Maybe some of that could go towards hamburger recipes? Nope. All of our- all of our proceeds from the hamburger truck go to proton pack technology development. 2.0?! I got a lower score 
than I did when I didn't even beat the game. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, it costs about four twenty five to beat this game. I think that's four twenty five well spent, especially because they're virtual coins. I didn't actually spend any money today. But uh, Alien Storm here is an awesome game. Um, it is not one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And I, you know what, if this game had been in the book, I wouldn't have been sad, but you know, I also understand that maybe it's not iconic enough to end up in there. But let me just say, this game is awesome. Just the van that these guys have is cool. I don't know, I had a lot of fun with this game today. This is my reward for, again, um, making it five years into the 1001 quest. Uh, so I thought I'd take a break with hunting some aliens. And what did you guys think of today's video? What did you guys think of Alien Storm here? Is it a game you knew about? Is it a game that you're just learning about from this video? Does it look awesome and bring back memories of the mutants that we all loved in the 90s and our obsession with aliens and Ninja Turtles and all sorts of like mutant stuff in the 90s, ooze and toxic waste? The 90s were all about that. Does it bring back the same nostalgia for you that it does for me? Let me know in the comments down below. Sound off down there. As always, I enjoy hearing from you guys. Um, and whatever the case may be with this game and how much you enjoyed it, uh, hopefully you had some fun today. Hopefully I made you laugh, brought you some, uh, some nostalgia if that was the case. Like the video and all that jazz. And uh, I will be back soon with another game in my ongoing quest to try all the games in the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. So check out the main series if you've uh, ever heard of that before. Until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. And we'll see you soon. Peace. Damn, girl!